Where is my man Chang? Where you at? There he is. What's up, dude? Not much. I'm excited to be here. Great to have you. As always, we're a little bit behind and I've got after your talk, we're going to be doing a little bit of stand up comedy routine in the break. So I'm going to let you go. And then we've got the comedy coming up next. I can only imagine that my man Mikhail has a lot planned for this comedy routine because I mean, Gemini 1.5 came out today and gave us something that nobody asked for, but apparently they thought it was going to be useful. <laughs> One million tokens. Uh, I don't know if you saw that yet or you've been yeah. with your head in this 100% trying to write your, uh, your talk. So Cheng, great to have you, man. Thanks to Lance DB for sponsoring us. And Thanks I'm going to get out of your way and let you cook, my man. Sounds good to me. Let me get the screen share started. Okay. Okay. I think I see something. I hope they're the everybody sees the same thing too. Cool. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Demetrius. I'm here to talk about uh, RAG and how it's just Rexus in disguise. And uh, if when I said that, the Transformers uh, theme music played in your head, uh, ping me and DM me afterwards, we're gonna be great friends. So hi, my name is Changsha. I'm the CEO and co-founder of LandCB, uh, the database for multimodal AI. So it's very easy to use in solves in seconds. You can get up to billion scale vector search for RAG, and you can also store tensors and um, image data in it for training, fine tuning uh, in, a, in our uh, PyTorch and TensorFlow data loaders. So uh, I've been working in this space for almost two decades at this point. Um, I started out being one of the co-authors of the Pandas library. Uh, most recently, I spent uh, a number of years at Tubi TV, a streaming company working on ML ops, uh, recommender systems, and uh, ML experimentation. So if you want to uh, talk shop, I'm on Twitter and GitHub using the same handle, uh, Chengiz Khan. OK, so uh, RAG, another slide about RAG. Are we sick of it yet? Never, right? Um, so with RAG, uh, we can see it's sort of the open book exam of uh, AI where you can extend the model's knowledge without having to touch the model itself. Uh, it's really, really easy to build a demo, and we've talked a lot about that. Um, but what about production? All right, so in production, the quality of your retrieval really matters. Uh, if you were on Twitter yesterday, you might have seen this tweet where a gentleman accidentally wrote 500 basis points when he meant to write 50, and the company stock tanked after uh, they issued the correction. Now, of course, if a human makes the mistake, uh, you may be tempted to just say, hey, fire that person. Uh, if the AI makes that mistake, uh, what do you do here? Do you fire the engineer that wrote the application? Do you fire the user? Um, do you sue OpenAI? It's not clear. But whatever the uh, recourse, you know, retrieval quality and accuracy really matters. So how do people, how have people really try to increase qual uh, quality? Well, one, through different chunking experiments before the embedding generation process. We've tried with different uh, embedding models and then using different recall techniques for full type search or just SQL search or graph search. And then once you have results from all these different methods of searching, you have to have a way to combine all of them and maybe re-rank them before you feed it to the LLM. If you've worked in sort of classical machine learning, uh, this might look familiar. Right, because it's basically just a content or in general a, a recommender system. So the chunks are just you know features and and uh, different chunking experiments are more like feature engineering, right? And in the content recommender system, you might have recallers based on embeddings from user history, the content metadata, the uh, user demographic data, and even like posters or uh, subtitles and things like that. And then you it goes into a re-ranking model and then uh, and you have a final response, which is usually sort of what do you display to the user in the home grid um, for, you know, like a Netflix or, or e-commerce like Amazon or eBay or something like that. Um, okay, so let's take a diversion and see a quick example of how this works uh, for RAG. And so for LandCB, this is a recent release. Uh, we're, we're now supporting 
um, hybrid search with re-ranking. And so we wrote this little notebook on Colab to uh, use the Airbnb financial data uh, data set to demonstrate this feature. Um, although given yesterday, maybe I should be using a Lyft financial data for this. But um, let's step through this really quickly. So here I've got the SEC uh, filing PDF, and then I'm going to use PyPDF loader to load it and then use LangChain's uh, recursive uh, character splitter to split that up. And then I'm going to create a LangCB table to say, hey, I'm going to use the OpenAI uh, embedding model. And then uh, the data model is just, OK, I've got the page content uh, from the LangChain doc and then uh, a, a vector field that will be generated by the OpenAI embedding model. Uh, and then I can create this table using this data model and then just um, add the LangChain documents to my table. And so I can turn this table into a pandas data frame. And I can see there is a uh, column of page, page content, the text, and then the vectors. I didn't have to generate it myself. The LangCB does that in the background using uh, OpenAI. So uh, vector search is pretty simple. So we want to ask a question, what are the specific factors contributing to Airbnb's increased operational expense in the last fiscal year. So this is just table.search, pass in the query, limit five, I want five responses, and give it to me as a pandas data frame. So I get the top um, uh, page content, the vector, and also uh, the, the vector distance here. And uh, we can see that it's, it's not bad if we look at one of these. Um, you know, the listings uh, decline uh, amongst uh, different factors. And so this is all about, you know, financial headwind and things like that. Now, how does uh, hybrid search work? Well, hybrid search means not only do we search uh, via the vector field, we're also searching in this page content text. So what we're going to do is create a, um, a full text search index on the con uh, page content field. And then the only thing different I have to do during search is pass in uh, query type equals hybrid. And now I get um, a data frame back. And instead of just the distance, it's relevant score. By default, what we do is a linear combination. You normalize the scores from the, uh, the vector search and the uh, full text search. And then you combine them into a relevant score using just a simple linear combination. And so what you can see is that um, the second document return is actually different now. So from the, uh, from the hybrid search, uh, we get something about uh, this this clause about the uh, contractor may deliver a pricing certificate, blah blah blah. Um, and I believe if, you know if, if you look at the original query, uh, you know fiscal year is mentioned here, and so this is sort of what the full text search is picking up here, All right? And this is the second document uh, based on vector search. Now. Um, uh, this is pretty simple. And one of the great things about this feature is that it's very customizable. So out of the gate, we support five different types of re-rankers. So the best, uh, we've seen is actually the Cohere re-ranker, uh, without fine tuning. So here you just say, I want to use the Cohere re-ranker and then pass then that in to the search process. And you get, um, sort of a, a data frame that looks similar in structure. But uh, the scores and and the content is different. So um, as, as you can see, the Cohere ranker actually surfaces to the top something that's very directly relevant. And so if we look at the um, GPT response, Chat GPT response based on the top context uh, from vector search versus Cohere, you can actually see that using the Cohere responses, um, we we see that we're able to tease out the big um factor which is international operations particularly in china uh, so we support uh, in addition we support colbert re-ranker cross cross and go to re-ranker um, and an interesting open ai re-ranker where we're actually prompting open ai to become an expert uh, re-ranker and then of course with a few lines of code you can actually write your own custom re-ranker and plug that in to uh to the search process all right um OK, so um, you know, in general, I think uh, so this is a this was a, a quick demo of how do you go through that hybrid search and re-ranking process and different ways that you can uh, re-rank your results. Uh, what's missing here is that, you know, from the analogy, recommender systems always, 
get better over time the more you use it. And that is because of the feedback mechanism. And actually in RAG, people, I, I see a lot of users that are uh, starting to uh, experiment with this as well. Um, so you can see one of our users talk about how he was able to, with you know, $10 of synthetic data, uh, to be able to fine tune the embedding model to be a lot better than you know the the best in class generic embedding models. So this will be something that we're going to be working on next, and I think you'll be able to see great results from that. Now, um, last thing I'll say is that analogies have limitations, right? So it's not a perfect one-to-one -one parallel between RAG and our recommender systems. Right? The end result is different, and there in in RAG there's an extra step of generation. Uh, the you know relevant what is relevant to right whether the results in recommender systems are relevant to a particular user here in RAG the relevance is de defined for a given question right and then um, for recommender systems the ranking that like first spot in in the home page uh, is super valuable so uh, fine grained differences in ranking also matters for RAG you know if your top context answers fit within the context. Uh, the the token limit, then that you know one two three position may not as uh, matter as much. So I think a lot of that is means that you know how you measure the quality is going to be different, and so it's not exactly a, a one to one match, but it's certainly worth thinking about and drawing parallels uh, to get insights from uh, uh, traditional recommender systems. All right. Um, so that's it for my talk. I, th I think it's roughly 10 minutes. And thank you for listening to me ramble. And uh, we'd love to have you join our Discord channel and uh, talk more about RAG and AI and, and whatnot. I think I just have to say one thing, which is you take the cake for best Twitter handle. Thank you. It is Can actually it my uh, AIM rename. So it is uh, Chengiz Khan, C H A N G H I S K H A N. It's uh, I'm dating myself, but it's my my uh, A A A I M screen name. Oh, it's so good, man! It is so good. Is there a link that you can uh, drop in here or in the chat for that collab notebook that you were just playing with? Absolutely, I'll drop it in the um, uh, in the chat. Perfect. All right, man. Thank you for doing this, and we're gonna keep on moving with these